Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Have any of you ever gone to see or been in the presence of an earthly king? An earthly king in his earthly kingdom is a mighty sight to behold. Now, in our modern world, there aren't a lot of kings, and the ones that are here are not usually really where the seat of power lies. But you could just as easily make this illustration about the president. And wherever the president goes, he never goes by himself. There's always a big entourage that goes with him. If you've ever been in a city when the motorcade comes through, they shut down roads and highways because not just anyone can come and see the king. Not just anyone can come and see the president. But with all their power and their might, it has its limits. It's limited by walls and borders, by nations and people, by the frailties of their human flesh. Before the enemies of God's people, the might and power of earthly kings can only grovel and stand in horror. They're far beyond their powers to deal with. We see this as we look throughout the Old Testament. Old Testament Israel had their kings. Very few of them even were able to remain faithful to their God, much less confront the enemies of God's people. And by enemies, I don't just mean the Assyrians and the Babylonians. I mean sin, death, and the devil. But there was a promise made long, long ago that a new kind of king, different from all the rest, would come. And this new kind of king would not be limited in all the ways these earthly kings and rulers are. Not by the boundaries of walls or nations, not by their popularity with the people, and not by the frailties of flesh. That is today's epiphany, that the new promised king is here. Epiphany, the word itself, as I shared with the children, means an illuminating discovery. Something was made known or found that previously was not known. And you hear it a bit in the language of Paul in our epistle reading today, that the mystery of Christ. It's not something we come to on our own. For all of Paul's wisdom, it wasn't him who sought out Christ, but it was Christ who sought him out and revealed the truth to him. Well, in our gospel reading today, the sign of this fulfillment of promise is the three wise men coming to visit Jesus. Now, technically, we don't know that there's three. There may have been more. But there's three gifts that are brought because when you go to visit a king... You don't come empty-handed. You come and offer gifts, and then what do they do after giving their gifts? They fall down and worship him, this new kind of king. But there's another really key thing that the wise men tell us today, and it's especially important for most of us gathered here and throughout the world, that this new sort of king is not bound by the limitations of earthly kings and kingdoms. Not just in terms of his ability to face the enemies of God's people, both those on earth and the spiritual powers of darkness, with sin, death, and the devil, but also that he is not bound to the covenant of one earthly kingdom of people. You see, the wise men came from a different country, and we don't know how they knew, but the Holy Spirit revealed to them that the king was here. And he wasn't just a king for Old Testament Israel, but a king for a new Israel, a king for all people who would call on his name in faith. So this earthly and heavenly distinction is really important for a couple of reasons for us today. One, as mentioned before, The enemies of God's people are beyond the capabilities of earthly kings to confront, much less to defeat. 
So a new sort of king is needed. And again, we look to the Old Testament, we look at those kings who wasn't even close in their competition against the sins of their own flesh, much less the sin of the whole world. They could do nothing in the face of such an enemy. A different sort of king is needed, and so a different sort of king has come, and he has come to you today. A lot of times when we read Bible accounts, we wonder, where am I in this story? Today the answer is easy. You're one of the wise men. You're one of the people that God has made known to you that the new and promised heavenly king is here, and he's here to set you free. He's here to defeat your enemies once and for all, and to bring in a new kind of kingdom unlike any that has ever been before it. A kingdom that is not bound by time and space, much less borders and people. He is bringing his heavenly kingdom to you. The second reason that this distinction is really important is that God's love is such that he desires all to be saved. This means that those in faith are welcome regardless of whether or not they're part of the Old Testament people of Israel or the new Israel through faith in Christ. That's what the wise men remind us today. It doesn't matter where you were born or who you were born to, how put together your family is, what status you have in earthly society, or even how many good things you've done. Just the gift of faith given in this new heavenly king, the Savior King Jesus. This is his new kingdom that you're living in. This is his new Israel that you have been grafted into. The people of God, beloved and righteous in the sight of God because of the sacrifice that this new great king will make for you. You may recall last week we were learning about Simeon and Anna at the presentation of Jesus in the temple, and Simeon sings a song, and we're going to sing it again later today in the service. And one of those lines in that song is a light for revelation to the Gentiles. That's the epiphany of today, that Jesus is a light for our revelation. That through him, you and I are now a part of Israel, God's people. A part of his kingdom, which has no end. And he has indeed defeated once and for all, all the enemies of God's people. No more fear. No more worry. No more wondering if we have the strength or the power. The answer is, we don't. But he does. God's covenant is no longer with a small group of earthly kingdom people, but now is with all of those who have been given the gift of faith in the Holy Spirit, regardless of what nation they come from, regardless of who they were born to, for they have been reborn and made new in Christ Jesus, just as you and I have. So rejoice today in the illuminating revelation of Epiphany. You are a child of God. You are part of God's people now. For the king who has come was not coming just for an earthly kingdom, but to establish a heavenly kingdom, to save you, make you new, and bring you into it. And he has indeed done it. Jesus, the great heavenly king, has come. And this is for all who believe, from every tribe and nation, they will be in his kingdom, and this kingdom will have no end. It's quite the illuminating discovery, isn't it? Happy Epiphany, in the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which passes our human understanding, Guard your hearts and minds in the promise of the epiphany discovery that God loves you and sent his son to save you, make you new, and make you his own. May that peace be yours until he comes again.
to bring us fully into that kingdom. Amen.